Hello everyone, this is Akaima. Welcome back to more World of Warships and we're taking a look at the Tier 9 Kitakaze. One last look before I move on from the Kitakaze to the Harugumo. And we are playing on Land of Fire. As you can see, quite a few Tier 9s, uh, a couple of Iowas, a Fletcher, but surprisingly no tier 9 cruisers uh highest tier on both sides is a tier 7 which is gonna be interesting but as you most definitely can see there's quite a few destroyers and i've noticed recently this has been kind of a thing well it's always been kind of a thing uh destroyers and battleships are generally the most played uh ship lines compared to any of the others which is sad because a cruiser, a good cruiser player, can actually make a big difference in a battle. But let's actually talk about the Kitakaze. What is the Kitakaze? The Kitakaze is, in essence, just a upgraded Akazuki. That's generally the quickest way to actually talk about it, but let's actually look at specifics. One nice thing, as you may have noticed, is she's actually fairly quick. I do run the speed flag on her, uh, very similar to how I ran the speed flag on the Akazuki, and most every other ship that I do run. So with the speed flag she can get up to around 37 knots and with the engine boost she can get over 39 to 40 knots. So definitely a huge upgrade compared to the Akatsuki where the Akatsuki had cruisers that were uh, almost faster than her but one obviously main thing about the Kitakaze is her guns. Her guns are her bread and butter Fletcher pops up and just just watch how quickly this Fletcher just kind of melts with the just the HE incoming and they fire very very quickly 2.4 seconds a salvo so even though we're not able to see him we're still landing shots did get a fire I think now we've kind of kind of lost him there we go Fletcher is finally spotted I believe actually by the moss I think the moss is spotting him at the moment uh, but there's also enemy Lo Yang, which was the bane of Akazuki players uh, back in the previous seasons. But there we go, our very first kill of the game. We're in first blood, and Lo Yang is just running around and opening up. Now we do have a friendly uh, boys Boise uh, behind us, and we're gonna try to help him out here in a moment because there is a cruiser and a battleship coming this way. But as you can see at this longer range, the arcing on the shells is very high. That it does require quite a bit of bleed, but up close and personal can be quite devastating. But one nice thing, as you can see, we're actually able to shoot mostly over this island. Uh, but obviously I am pulling away that is New Orleans, not as good as it used to be. But still hits pretty hard, can be quite devastating if you... Uh, uh, if you're not paying attention and allow that New Orleans to actually uh, hit you. So I'm actually going to offer my smoke to the Boise behind me because uh, we did see a battleship kind of pushing down this line. With the smoke it should help it uh, be able to fire, especially focus down this New Orleans. That's most definitely what I want to get rid of. So guns are fun. They are fun. Now obviously they are 100 millimeters, which does mean uh, they do struggle. Not as bad as they used to. They did get a buff uh, recently, uh, which does mean they do penetrate even without IFHE. But I do run IFHE on this ship. Uh, and I also do run Demolition Expert just to get that extra percentile fire chance. Uh, even though it's not overly necessary just because how quickly these guns are just able to bombard uh, enemy targets Just just watch how quickly we're just able to just Completely annihilate granted. We're not getting that much damage doing around 396 uh, I believe his center area is starting to get saturated but it's just it's it's phenomenal that You can you can focus down ships and with the speed of the Kitakaze, you're able to more or less zip around. Not as good as obviously the Russian destroyers are, but this New Orleans is going to go down uh, one way or another. They're going to try dodge shots because at the moment the enemy team is going quite heavily on the east side. And right at the exact moment, this Mahan pops up. 
Um, I don't exactly know where he came from, but honestly, I would never pick a fight with a Kitakaze, uh, especially when you're firing AP at it. Uh, doesn't seem like a very brave choice. So Bens or Benson, Mahan, is gonna start pulling away. Gonna try to get out of there. He's gonna resort to his smoke screen, which eh, is nice. But honestly, the Kitakaze can keep up with this enemy Mahan. That's not really gonna be overly beneficial uh, for it, but. As soon as we can, we're going to actually start pushing their base because the enemy team really hasn't put a lot of forces over here and we've swept them aside more or less. So we're actually going to start pushing their base, putting pressure on them uh, because our almost our entire team is bottlenecked up there uh, around E6, E7 area. So, I mean, at the moment, we have pretty much free reign over their base. We're going to try to push in. Try to put some pressure. And then let's actually talk about uh, her detect. Her detect actually is really, really nice. 5.9 kilometers. Very similar to the Fletcher um, and most of the other tier 9s. So you're at least on the same playing field as most of the other tier 9 destroyers. Well, very least the Fletcher, which is probably what some people consider the best uh, knife fighter in the game. But Mahan gets spotted, I believe, by our friendly Moss that is uh, a little bit further south, but just it just goes down so quickly. And since there's a smoke screen, might as well use it. Try to get some damage on this enemy Nagato. The range on the Kitakaze is fairly decent, around 12.5 kilometers. The torpedoes are also something. We're actually going to witness a few spread of torpedoes here later on, but you can kind of understand it does take a little bit of skill, and a faster ship is going to be much more capable at avoiding your shells, but there's just so much of them uh, that you do a really good job there just causing those fires. So at the moment, we're actually going to try to push in. A lot of their battleships are actually holding base. Uh, I believe they're Iowa, they're North Carolina. They're all kind of just holding the fort, which is actually a really good idea because this map doesn't really require you to push quite as hard. Uh, need to protect your base, but obviously they left their entire western side wide open, so I'm actually going to start pushing in. And as you can see the engine boost, uh, we're up to around 39.5 knots. Now, one thing about the maneuverability about the ship. She's a long ship. A really long ship. And that means she has a huge turning circle radius around 750 meters, I believe, around 750, 790. So, she's very sluggish when dealing with enemy torpedoes. And speaking of torpedoes, the Kitakaze does have one set of torpedoes with six torpedoes in them, but she also does have the reload module. And these are decent torpedoes. These are essentially Shimakaze torpedoes, and they hit pretty hard around 23,000 points of max damage. And they go around 67 knots, and they have a 12km range. So, in all essence, a Shimakaze torpedo. But. As you can see, the reload on the torpedoes is insanely long, almost three minutes. I believe it's 171 seconds. So getting torpedoes out at a quite regular interval is not likely going to happen. Uh, your mainstay is going to be your guns as always. Now, I believe uh, during this battle I actually have some lag issues. I don't think it's actually at this moment and for some odd reason, I actually don't think I landed any torpedoes on that Iowa. So at the moment, Iowa, really, there really isn't much you can do against uh, Kitakaze. Your best hope is to try to blind fire it or try to rush it. But this Iowa is more concerned about uh, enemy ships further south, not really paying attention to me. And 
doing pretty good on damage. Uh, almost, almost 200k right now. I'm trying to get another fire. He did rep his fire, so he is vulnerable to any fires that do get set. And that's one thing that Kitakaze can at least do is it's able to at least possibly get some fires. Now I'm actually going to pull up a smoke screen. The smoke screen has about 30 seconds left. Uh, but this Iowa is starting to push in this direction and I want to give myself as much room as possible because granted she does and she is a fairly quick destroyer it's still foolish uh, to be sitting in a smoke screen while a battleship is pushing you especially when you do not have your main powerful weapons available which is in fact my torpedoes so I'm actually gonna pull away uh, did slow up the points uh, of the enemy team we actually have a moss currently uh, capping uh, at the moment which is beneficial because it is reducing the amount of points that are coming in for the enemy team I uh, decides to go ahead and turn the other direction and I'm debating whether or not to fire our torpedo reload module is back up so we're gonna try to maybe get some torpedoes five seconds on those torpedoes uh, but it does look like he's starting to pull away Moss is also dropping torpedoes Let's see if we can get any torpedoes landed on the enemy battle uh, at enemy Iowa see if that actually occurs uh, I believe the moss is actually gonna get some but this moss is extremely low on health Iowa does take a torpedo we only have one more smoke screen we're gonna uh, possibly use it we're gonna actually reverse and this is one tactic you can definitely use is reversing into a spot into a cap because if you're stuck in a cap and you need to get out of there quickly it's going to take you a lot longer to get out of the cap if you try to turn around or you try to reverse so instead you can use your butt to get into the cap and then you still have the ability to go quickly forward uh, we did get our third kill of the game there but we have just lost our friendly Moss so we're going to go ahead and pop our smoke screen and try to help out. Now here I think is actually where uh, I have a little bit of issue with lag. I'm actually going faster than my smoke screen is uh, deploying so I'm actually being spotted. Uh, only ship only as only capable of really hitting me is the enemy Legato. Um, but obviously I'm going to take my time get back in the smoke screen. I'm focusing on the Kigero. Kigero is more of a threat. Uh, but he is at the very reaches of my range, so I do switch over to the North Carolina. I guess that is a North Carolina and not a good Nagato. Hmm, that is surprising. So, North Carolina, main focus right now. And he actually does uh, something that well, people are getting better and better at, and that is shooting at a smoke screen destroyer. Because the Kitakazi's guns fire so quickly that you're actually able to more or less land your shots where the enemy destroyer is and there we have just earned confederate uh, we're sitting at 133,000 points of damage but at the exact same time a enemy destroyer has actually started uh, capping our base and right there there we go there is my my lag issue been having some lag issues from time to time and it can be quite annoying. And the North Carolina does get around 6,000 points of damage. Uh, which is annoying. Not particularly fun because you can't really repair that. But I guess you've got to give some effort for uh, the battleships. And there we go. Earn Kraken Unleashed and High Caliber. Took out the enemy Kagero. North Carolina has pulled away. Enemy team has a uh, enemy destroyer. I believe is the... Kagero is a Kagero. They have a North Carolina and they have an Iowa. And obviously, we know where the enemy Kagero is. So I go ahead and try to get torpedoes on the enemy North Carolina. Honestly, those torpedoes are bad, I really can tell you, because no way is that North Carolina going to run up to the one uh, 
to the three four line. Uh, that was not a particularly great prediction there. But at the moment, we are currently capping their base out. We have two ships in the enemy base. Uh, we have, I believe, our Colorado and our Boise heading back towards our base to go defend it. Uh, enemy Kagero is spotted, which is extremely beneficial. Hopefully, we should be able to reset. But at the moment, the Iowa is trying to quickly get back over to his base to try to defend it. And keep in mind, the North Carolina, it's a fast battleship, and it can creep up on you. And I, I myself uh, misjudged his speed, as you will see in a moment. So, Kitakaze. I've talked a lot about her. I've talked about her speed, I've talked about her guns, her torpedoes. One other thing is the fact that her AA is decent, but it's no Fletcher AA. You don't have defensive AA available to you. And Iowa does uh, land, take a couple torpedoes. Alkazuki is spotted, and I think it's actually a really good time to try to get out of there. I'm hoping to cap this out, uh, but the Akasuki just got reset. So we're actually going to try to pull out of there as quickly as possible. I wait just a teensy bit too long. I really should be going right now. Because this Iowa is actually going to spot me here in a moment. I wait way too long for this. And try to slip out. We still have 40 seconds left on our torpedoes. But going back to our AA guns. They're decent. Uh, they can shoot down planes. But you don't have any possibility of disrupting any enemy bombers or torpedo planes so you don't have that going for you so that's the only major downside but at the moment uh, most major concern at the moment is just trying to get away from this Iowa and once again the Kitakase's detect is actually very very low uh, Iowa turns towards the Akazuki Akazuki I think is gonna go down he's getting pretty much sandwiched between the North Carolina and the Iowa torpedoes are back up gonna try to get these torpedoes off I uh, do have an island uh, unfortunately coming in my way but also probably need to try to help out with this enemy Kagero so I'm actually gonna move back towards our base uh, Boise is trying his very best to deal with this enemy Kagero but fortunately we're still ahead in points but not for very much longer main focus is try to take out this Kagero uh, if at all possible also it'd be nice if those torpedoes would hit that Iowa this would be super beneficial Akazuki actually manages to escape uh, with around 5,000 points of health and one other thing I should probably also point out um, as we get three torpedo hits on the enemy Iowa and do 197,000 points of damage uh, is the fact that the health pool on the Kitakaze is just slightly higher than the Akazuki. Um, currently, the Akazuki is probably running a uh, survivability expert on his captain, and that's why he has around 23,000 points of health. Uh, but normally, you're looking around 20,300 for the Akazuki, and the Ak Kitakaze obviously only has 20,700. But... In essence, not a bad battle. Uh, my thoughts on the Kitakaze. She's essentially an Akasuki. Um, just with one additional torpedoes and very similar guns. Uh, slightly faster. Uh, pretty much talked about everything about uh, everything you really should know about the Kitakaze. And there we've just lost our Akazuki, who I think is trying to get torps on the North Carolina. But in about 45 seconds, the battle's about to end. And would have been very upsetting had that actually cost us the game. Because this was actually a very fun battle. Six skills, 197,000 points of damage, almost 200,000 points of damage. Not too bad. But I will have to say, with the fact that the guns do have a slight issue with uh, penetrating uh, thicker armor, does mean that your damage capabilities is very reduced and you are probably going to have to rely on fires. But with that, this is going to be it for that battle. 
And North Carolina is actually outside our range. Hmm. So our team earned a victory. Not a bad battle. 357,311 silver, 9,962 XP. We earned Confederate, Devastating Strike, Kraken Unleashed, First Blood, and High Caliber. We did 197,964 points of damage, 423 shell hits, 5 torpedo hits, which is always fantastic to see, especially considering that you're only able to get out about 6 salvos. Not even 6 salvos. Yeah, about six salvos of torpedoes in a match, uh, excluding the reload module or consumable. Six kills, 12 fires, three flooding, and one spotted. We are top of the team with base XP of 2,441. As you can see, uh, because there were a lot of battleships, we got a lot of damage against them. The Iowa's 50,000, 48,000 respectively. New Orleans, we did around 28,000. Mahan, 12,000. Fletcher, around 7,000. And I believe against the Nagatos, uh, around 20 to 30,000. Main guns, just take a look at this. Keep in mind that we did 197,964. HE, high explosive. 92,024. Now there were probably a few times I could have actually switched over to armor piercing and that is a viable target or viable option, especially against certain destroyers that have thicker armor. Your AP does do a little bit better damage against them. So definitely use that. Torpedoes did around 66,268. Fires did around 39,654. About a third of our damage came from fires while torpedoes did almost about half the damage there. So overall, the guns are nice. They fire very, very quickly. And the Kitakase is very strong against enemy destroyers. Very, very strong. It is a great anti-DD DD. So against enemy destroyers, fantastic. Battleships and cruisers, it's going to struggle a little bit more. Uh, just because of its high explosive penetration is not as obviously good as say the Russian destroyers But you have so many shells you do have the opportunity to use IFHE That you can kind of make up up for the fact that Your shells just tend to either break or do very minimal amount of damage so there is something that is going for the Kitikaze but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and jump into port and I will see you guys there. All right, everyone, welcome back to the port. And the Kitakaze is, in essence, an Akatsuki upgraded. She is very, very similar to it in a lot of ways, but in essence, it's a little bit more tankier, has a bit more health, better yet. Its guns are better, its torpedoes hit harder, and it has better concealment. But let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. Health pool is 20,700, about 400 points more than the Akazuki, so not big, big difference there. Her armor is, well, it's IGN armor, very, very thin, 19 millimeters. So do expect a lot of over penetrations from any cruisers, though battleships can still blap you if they get enough shells into you and actually get the shells fully armed. But against, say, Z-52 or Z-46, they are definitely going to struggle a bit more to actually do a lot of damage to you, which is quite fine. Now, one thing to keep in mind is her armor on her guns are very, very thin, and they will get knocked out from time to time. I've yet to actually fully lose a turret, but they will become incapacitated. And now let's actually talk about the guns. You have four dual 100 millimeters, and in essence, the... Kitakaze, Akazuki, and Harugumo are gunboats through and through. That is going to be their bread and butter. And the reload time on the Kitakaze's gun is 2.4 seconds. Very, very quick. And if you have adrenaline rush, it is going to make it a lot quicker when you take more damage. Turn time on the guns is 12.9 seconds. Max dispersion is 101 meters. Max HE damage is 1200. Now they did buff the HE penetration of the Akazuki, Kitakaze, and Harugumo. So even without IFHE, you can at least pen a little bit thicker armor. But with IFHE, which I highly recommend, and we'll talk about that in a second, is the fact that 
with IFHE, you are going to be doing a lot more damage. The fire chance isn't overly impressive, only 7%, very similar to a lot of USN DDs. But with the rate of fire, you will get those fires, and that is where you're going to get a lot of your damage from. The AP is actually an option you can go with. I would almost say use AP against thicker armored destroyers, such as a Kabrashk, a Udaloy, a Tashkent, and even a Gearing, uh, especially Gearings. Gearings are just so fat and wide that uh, your armor piercing can do pretty good damage. And if a ship is burning, use AP. You'll probably do a lot, little bit more damage, so that's a good option to go with. And one obviously other unique thing about the Akizuki, Kitakaze, and Harugumo is the velocity on the shells, 1,000 meters per second. So one kilometer a second is very, very quick. However, you will notice when firing at longer range, and the range is pretty decent, 12.5 kilometers, they will start to arc. They lose a lot of shell velocity in the air, so at further distance they have a more arcing to them, which is beneficial because you can actually shoot over islands with those guns. But up close, very deadly against destroyers, and this is essentially what this line is great against, is taking out enemy destroyers just because that high rate of firepower and the IFHE damage. You can take down destroyers relatively quickly, but torpedoes are surprisingly decent. Now you won't be using them too too much, they have a very long reload time, 171 seconds. You only have one torpedo tube, but you do have six torpedoes. And they have a decent range at 12 kilometers. Now the speed on the torpedoes is 67 knots, these are the Type 93 Mod 3. So they do hit pretty darn hard, 23,767. And one nice thing about these torpedoes is even though you have one torpedo launcher, you can use your torpedo reload consumable. And this will allow you to get additional six out and possibly cause a, some flooding on a target. So very, very devastating, but it's not really where you're going to be getting a large, large amount of damage for your Kitakaze games. Beneficial, but not overly uh, mainstay of the Kitakaze. Now the IGN line was supposed to be the anti-aircraft destroyer of the IGN obviously and the AA is decent. I mean it's not overly impressive. You have 18 single 25 millimeters. Average damage is 39 with a 3.1 kilometer range. Then you have six dual 40 millimeters. Average damage is 79 with a 3.5 kilometer range and then your main guns are dual purpose. Average damage is 100 with a firing range of 5 kilometers. However, since you don't have defensive AA, they're not overly useful. Now, yes, you can shoot down planes. I've done it many times. But the real main benefit of air anti-aircraft destroyers is the fact that they have defensive AA and they can actually break up attacks and give you a little bit more breathing room and help support friendly ships, but the Kitakaze doesn't have that. It has no part, no possibility of actually disrupting attack runs on your friendly ships or on you. And so it's very susceptible for air attacks, especially torpedoes, because the one major issue of the Kitakaze is her turning silk radius is large 730 meters she's a very long boat so it is very difficult to actually try to dodge torpedoes she's nothing like a fletcher but she is quick 37.8 knots versus what the akizuki was at 34.6 knots so definitely a lot faster uh, than most cruisers rudder shift time is nice 4.6 seconds so decent rudder shift time but the main issue is obviously that turning soak radius is not very beneficial, especially when you're trying to dodge torpedoes that are coming your direction. Now one nice thing is her concealment, 5.9 kilometers. The Akatsuki had a detect of 6.1, so with the 5.9 you are very similar to a lot of the tier 9 destroyers, the Fletcher, the Z46, so you have that going for you. 
uh, it is very beneficial. It does allow you to sneak up more closer to enemy destroyers and also to other targets. Now the detectability range by air is somewhat large, 3.6 compared to say the Fletcher, uh, definitely a lot smaller. While firing in smoke it is a 2.5 kilometer range. Now when you first get the ship you will see that she actually has possibility of getting three different types of torpedoes. Starting off you come with the normal Type 93 Mod 2. These are exact same as the Akazukis. Uh, once you actually get it ground up, you can get the Type 93. These give you two kilometers additional range. It does take a little bit longer to reload, about four seconds. But the damage also is increased by 2,800. Now you also have the Type 40, or Type F3 torpedoes. These are the fast torpedoes. These are the Shimakaze torpedoes. They reload a little bit less, 157 seconds. They don't do as much damage, but they're quick, 76 knots. And the other downside of these torpedoes is the fact that they are eight kilometers. So it's extremely dangerous to use these torpedoes. Could be viable, especially when taking on enemy destroyers, using those torpedoes against those destroyers if needs be, be just because they are so quick in the water that they're able to more than likely hit the enemy destroyer without giving it much time to react. I don't run it uh, just because there are a lot of radar cruisers in the game. I find the ability to be able to drop torpedoes at 12 kilometers is beneficial, though I will have to say I like to sneak up on enemy ships, obviously those without radar, and give them a really nasty surprise. But when you first get the ship, I would almost recommend getting the hull upgrade. Now the hull upgrade gives you additional health. As you will see, uh, you come with 16,200. Yes, having the additional health is extremely beneficial, especially when taking on enemy destroyers. However, the other nice thing is the fact that you don't have it. Your rudder shift time is a little bit slower, 6.5 seconds. And then just having a little bit better with that rudder shift time is beneficial. Marginally, it's not that big of a difference, but it could definitely help you in trying to avoid shells or avoiding torpedoes. So I would recommend the whole upgrade just make you a little bit more tankier and a little bit more nimble in the water. After that, I would go for the gun and then the torpedoes. It is optional, go for the type F3s, but I, like I said, I personally prefer the type 93 mod 3s. Now with the Kitakaze, just like the Akatsuki, it does have a smoke and it does have a speed boost, but unlike the Akatsuki, it has an additional charge of the Torpedo Reload Booster 2. So very, very beneficial to actually have this. Uh, does obviously mean you'll able, you're able to get those torpedoes off and get pretty big hits. Moving on to the upgrades, this is what I have gone for my Kitakaze Main Armaments Mod 1. Once again, your main guns tend to get knocked out. Even with this, they tend to get knocked out uh, fairly often. Uh, damage Control System Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, and Propulsion Mod 2. Extremely beneficial for destroyers, able to get up to speed, especially if you are in a smoke screen and you're being a little bit too cocky and torpedoes are incoming. This allows you to get up to speed a little bit quicker and possibly dodge those torpedoes. Concealment System Mod 1, that's kind of a new brainer there. Then last but not least, Main Battery and Modification 3. Your guns are your bread and butter. Highly recommend. Try to buff them as much as possible. So with that said and done, our captain is a full spec'd up 19 captain. This was the original my Akizuki captain. And I primarily focused on just getting him to focus on the guns. This is essentially what this build is for, is to focus on the guns. Starting off priority target, I personally like it. It's my personal choice. Yes, you could argue since you're a destroyer, just expect everyone to be looking at you. But at the exact same time, there have been times when I've ran around in my Kitakaze, open waters, firing, and watching that thing and seeing no one actually looking at me, which allows me 
to know when to pull away if someone actually starts looking and when I need to be obviously a little bit more careful. Moving on, always, always get last stand. Adrenaline rush is probably going to be the last two points you will be using. Basics fire and training uh, increases the reload rate of your main guns. Concealment excerpt, make her a little bit stealthier. And then IFHE. IFHE is so beneficial for this line. It makes your shells penetrate a little bit more, 30% more, and extremely beneficial because a lot of armor on the higher tier battleships and cruisers are going to be thicker. And with this, this means you will be doing a little bit more damage and possibly, obviously, reducing the chance of fire. But causing and penetrating the ship armor is extremely beneficial if you're trying to try to take out an enemy target. Now, this is optional. This is what you can do. I went for Demolition Expert. It increases the chance of fire by 2%, which slightly negates this. So this obviously reduces the chance of fire by 3%. If you get Demolition Expert, it increases it by 2%. So after the fact, you get a minus 1% chance of fires. You could go that route. It's completely optional. Uh, I will have to say getting those fires are extremely beneficial, but something to keep in mind if a battleship or a cruiser is able to pull away and get heals off, it is able to repair all the fire damage it received. So you could argue a demolition expert could be opted out. You could get superintendent, gives you additional charge of all your consumables. But personally, this is what I've gone for, and I've really had great success with this build. And with that, we're actually going to say goodbye to the Kitakaze. We are moving on to the Harugumo, just in time because the British destroyers are coming along. And I can actually have some fun with the Harugumo. But this is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what we saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zaijen!